Uh, what's up guys and welcome to this next video on this very channel so this time is going to be a shorter video which is going to be about a video game topic which I've been wanting to do for quite a while I tried to filming this in December it sucked so now I have filmed it and finished it now in June and what you are about to see is that very video happening it's time Environmental storytelling, the favorite case of show don't tell. Ever since 3D gaming took off, there have been plenty of games that followed an idea to give players a cinematic experience without highly detailing the characters and lots of voice acting. While it is still a very effective method of telling a story, these kinds of games have been placed on the wayside. Instead, game developers just want to feed the player with all the information with the modern technology instead of giving the player an environment to play around in and find clues to complete the story. While Vanas and Freddy's Dead gave the player that, it has been declining over the years within mainstream media. But way back in 1996, a very special game for the PS1 did exactly what I will focus on in, in this video, Show Don't Tell, put in the level The Lost City, one of my favorite levels ever in gaming. Why so? Well, let me tell you. What in this context is the most atmospheric? The colors? The music? The structures? While it is tough to pinpoint that idea of what atmosphere truly is, but to be honest, it's really up to you to decide when you get that feeling, and when you find it, you know what atmosphere truly is. The colors are really something to behold, while most other levels have been ra rather bright and colorful. It is from this level onwards the color starts to change and become noticeably darker with the color palette changing. The original game had a really nice way of giving the player a sense of progression, so the changing colors really made a lot of sense. All of them are so great, it features a lot, a lot of red, grey and green as the primary colors. What's also great are unique enemies scattered around with a lot of animal-like creatures. They move much like in every other level, but in this one the feeling is just so different. You want to know why? Because these are the only types of enemies roaming around. In the levels before, humans were around, proving it is a populated island. But not here. How? Did something happen? Have they just gone to sleep? Well, they haven't. This level is set in pure sunshine as seen on the map, but at the same time I cannot see it. Well, maybe since Crash runs from a 2D pers perspective, the walls are probably covering it. What are these creatures anyway? Are they dangerous to everyone? Or only to Crash? I have no idea. Out of everything I think about in this level, the time frame is the most interesting, with all the details seen around and how the water is not yet dry dried up, with the torches still lit, it gives me the impression that this place hasn't really been abandoned too, too long ago, given how these creatures are still much alive. But after all of this said, what caused all of this to happen? When? How? While there are no confirmations about that, there are also clues which can tell who. My theory is this guy. Nitrous Brio, Dr. Cortex's right hand man. He created a potion which can mutate anyone. He even used it on, he, on himself in his own boss fight. He went mentally insane and started to attack with the same pattern over and over again. This could have happened to the inhabitants in the lost city. That potion may be slipped down in the waters that they drank, which mutated them. And not to mention that the Nitrous Brio's bonus icons appears in this level and not the other level, Sunset Vista. But and Cortex's face icons didn't appear at all. Now that's great storytelling. 